Well, hello there and welcome to the channel. I'm Cindy Daycheck with Queen Bee Creations and I'm delighted that you've chosen to spend some time here. If you like what you see, I invite you to subscribe. Keep us coming into your feed. We are with you every Monday and Friday with different uh, furniture, uh, refinishing, thrift flips, craft projects, whatever we got going on. Today is, today is a little bit different because I've got two kind of uh, little mini pieces here that we're gonna work on. One is this kind of big, tall cabinet, so little shelving unit. Um, and then this little guy, which, you know, sometimes these are salesman samples, sometimes these are, um, pieces of doll furniture. Sometimes they are just uh, designed to be kind of decorative items. I think that this is a great one to um, certainly use as doll furniture if you want. I think it's also one that you could easily put into a kitchen and use for spices. It would be a super cute little um, jewelry display case as well like you know just again depending upon what you're doing it would just be cute on a buffet as part of a vignette as well but it's really kind of well crafted and it has um it even has little plate rails back here so it's got a lot of cute details it is however kind of glued together quite solid as well so i'd originally thought of taking off the backing that's no longer happening because i really don't want to um break it in the process but we're gonna finish these guys up and give you an idea of when you see pieces like this of maybe ways that you could um, just kind of clean them up. I mean, this has got all this old school kind of toll painting on it, um, which is pretty kitschy and not in big demand right now. So I have gone ahead and kind of cleaned them up. And here's our first order of business. I'm not painting the insides of this. I will be taking off our little um, hardware knobs. Okay. Uh, when I get a screwdriver over here and um, because these are just held together with screws screw screw down in because these knobs are green and I think they're kind of cute and they work with the piece I'm gonna go with green so I'm gonna be using primarily apothecary from DIY on this piece and we'll kind of see where it goes I do have a little bit of um, Farm Fresh, which is kind of a deeper version uh, to do a little bit of blending or accenting if I feel like it. Possibly a little crinoline, we'll see. The big guy. It is painted navy inside already. So I'm going to look at just kind of cleaning that up by painting it navy as well. And I'm going to paint the entire outside navy. So I'm going to be using Hay Sailor from DIY because I'm gonna to need to go dark to cover this over. So I am gonna go lighter on the outside afterward, distressing back to the navy, but I don't wanna distress back to this. <laughs> so we're gonna cover it over with a dark color and it just makes sense to go in the same that we're doing the inside um, because it's less work. So I'm gonna grab a screwdriver, get rid of my hardware and then start painting.
and really it didn't take any more than one coat on each of these. Most, mostly, I mean, you know, this, one of the reasons that I went to a dark paint was to cover all that toll work up. And I've kind of changed a little bit of my plan because of that, meaning I thought that it would show a lot more. We'll see after I sand it. And that's really our next step. I want to sand both of these pieces and I've got 320 grit sandpaper. So I'm not looking at needing like a major sanding job here because I've only got the one coat on. It's not going to take a lot. So that's it. You can see that I'm getting a fair bit of distressing on here, which is what I want. So I want to be able to highlight some of those edges, some of the corners. And I'm gonna do a super light sanding on this one. So I've painted the inside and the outside. We've got more work to go on this one. But I just want to knock back smooth out a little bit of this because we won't have a chance to sand later. So I'm going to send this second because I wanna do the light sanding first, then the dark so that I don't transfer the dark over to the light. And um, then I'll get back to you and we'll start carrying on with these. But right now, I mean, look at super, how cute is that? <laughs> so cute. Anyway, I'm gonna carry on with the distressing and then I'll come back to you. All right, so before we jump into the next step on the blue piece, I just want to get this piece sealed before we do the next step on it because I do have just one little touch. Now, here's the thing. If you are a reseller, you have to be cautious with some of these little pieces because they can be a big, well, I'm just going to say it, they could be a big time suck, meaning you could get really caught up in doing a lot of really fine, minute detailing on these, but you're never going to get your cost back out of it. So you have to watch for um, kind of the, the what you think your final pricing is going to be like on a piece like this. So meaning, what could you get for it in your shop or you know, online or in your booth versus the amount of time it's going to take. Because really, sometimes, like a little piece like this hutch could, if you're not careful, could end up taking as much time as a little side table. But you're not going to be able to charge the same as you would for a little side table. So you have to really... Um, weigh your your options in terms of what you want to do to it why you want to do that and how much you're going to be able to get back for it so if you're doing this for a video and you're thinking okay i'm never gonna i'm, I'm never even gonna be able to sell it but um that's okay because i'll get the video all right fine 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 but i I need to sell things. I can't just store. I can't just store everything here forever. So, you know, there's maybe some things I'll experiment with, and it was a good experiment. But whew, okay, not not selling that. Or gee, I want to keep it. But for the most part, I'm doing this for business. So I need to be able to get my money out of it. So you'll notice on these, they are quick flips that I'm doing now. I do want to do one little touch on each that kind of takes it up just one little notch. So I get that this is just super cute on its own <laughs> and I could get away without doing anything, but you'll notice that I chose my color based on the knobs and they are green. And so I stayed with that, but they're just little knobs. They're just little wood knobs or screws. What I didn't do was switch out the hardware because by the time that I add in five more little knobs, that's probably, you know, another $10 that I would put into the piece that I would not be able to get out of it. 
and not money that somebody buying it would ever really recognize or want to have to pay for. So if you're wondering why I didn't change out that hardware, that's the reasoning. And I, and I like to let you guys know some of those decisions along the way because I know that a number of you watching me are, are resellers, that you are, um, you know, doing some of these things and for, for your businesses. And I like to give you some insights in terms of some of the decisions that I make, why I make them, and uh, give you an idea of some of the factors that go into it. Now that said, I want the final product to be really cute because I'd like it to sell. <laughs> so it's, it's a case of how much would that decision about the hardware be the determining factor over whether it would sell or not sell. And in this case, I think, I think it would be negligible, right? Most people aren't even going to catch on. Um, to, to that. You know, I don't think that metal knobs would make the difference in terms of whether this piece sells or not. Okay, so I've got my clear wax on this. I'm going to let it dry because I'm going to wipe it back off. But we're just putting it off to the side. Okay, stay closed. And then we're going to pop over. And before I sealed this piece up, I have another little thing I want to do. Now, when I'm in thrift stores, a lot of times I'm looking for um, like inexpensive add-on craft stuff. And one of the things I picked up for $1.99 from the Value Village was this bag of shingles, of wooden shingles. I don't do dollhouses. I have no idea what I would need this for, but I figured there would be a craft someday, sometime, where they would come in handy. And I think that we've hit that craft. So they're just little, round, tiny things like this that I thought might look kind of cute on the top of this. So I am just going to hot glue them. I'm gonna do a bit of an overlap here. I just wanna see kind of how many rows I could expect, how many I should plan for here. Two. Okay, so I think about six. So what I'm going to do, I'm trying to think of the best way for you guys to be able to see this happening. All right, let's take you up, all the way up, and turn it over. And what I am going to do is just do a little bit of hot glue, and I'm not doing the full width just yet, because I don't want it to all harden on me as I go across. But I'm just going to add my rows of shingles all the way across and then do the next row all the way to the top. And I'm going to do that on both sides. So get that all done before I start going into the refinishing. And I just think it's just another little touch that, again, $1.99 and it's not going to take much of my time at all. So I think it's just something that's going to add a little element of interest that helps distinguish the piece. And because I sometimes forget to push record, you can see on the blue piece that what I have done is I've applied white wax to the exterior and then wiped it back. Here I'm now applying clear wax on the inside. So I'm just looking to seal the piece on the inside without adding that extra kind of hazing and that whitewashed look that the white wax did on the exterior of the piece. Ultimately, you just put on your wax of either color, wipe it back, and let it dry. Okay, and just because I can't leave, leave. <laughs> I just, oh, let me just try one more thing. 
Um, what I am doing is I have some silver gilding wax from Annie Sloan and I'm putting it onto a paintbrush and I am taking the back and I am kind of painting it on, working it back and forth, right? And then flipping over to this side because it goes through the holes and doing the reverse. And I think that you can see even, even here, you can see what's been done, what hasn't been done. So it's just brightening it up a little bit um, from the, the dingy look that it was. And um, it's just giving it a cleaner, cleaner look more than anything else. So I'm going to continue to do that with all of that mesh kind of working my way back and forth, front and back. And this gilding wax will dry hard, okay? So it's going to self seal. The other thing that I'm going to do is that this was the knob, this drop loop. So to just kind of make it fit a little bit, I'm going to take that same brush and that same gilding wax and kind of brighten it up a little bit as well and just let that dry overnight just because um, then the the two main metal parts of this piece kind of kind of match so again I'm not looking at this having to be pure silver and not seeing the dark through it because my mesh still shows some of that dark it's just kind of brightening it up a little bit and giving it Kind of a hint of that silvery look while it still has a bit of that aged tarnished look to it which i'm kind of digging so i'm going to finish this mesh and i swear i'm really going to leave things overnight i gotta get going home at some point here um and then tomorrow we'll finish off the last piece for this one and the last piece for that get the hardware on and uh see what we got but um both of them are looking super cute so far, super quick little little fixes and zhuzhes up. And um, it's just kind of a nice way to hopefully, as you're out looking for items and thrifting items, to help you get some other ideas of how to be able to look at things and fix them up. Okay, cabinets are looking awesome but we've got two little things left to do. So on this guy, what I did was I looked for some scrapbooking paper that would work to just line the very back of this cupboard. I had originally thought to take the backing off and it was too thin and there was no way that it was gonna come off without splitting and I didn't wanna risk that. But what I have done is kind of cut this scrapbooking paper down and it should, okay, I see that first one's making a liar out of me, but it should just fit in there perfectly. Um, the one thing that I discovered about this little cabinet is, I never looked at the bottom, but it actually has written in pencil, it says made, especi made especially for Rachel Clemens Christmas 1997 by Pa Clemens. I love that. Okay, Rachel doesn't have it anymore. Sorry, Pa, but it was made by her grandpa. That's kind of cool. So, what I am going to do with these is I am going to paint them with decoupage, paint the back of it with decoupage, and then slide it in because, um, yeah, painting everything in there with it is just going to be crazy making. So I just want to be able to glue them down in. So I'm painting it on in behind here where you can't see me. <laughs> Sorry, gang. Um, so get that paper painted, especially the edging. Now, when you're doing this, if you are looking at, at decoupaging papers into a small um, 
cabinet like this, pay attention to the scale of the pattern. Meaning, I deliberately picked a paper that had a very small print to it. You wouldn't want to do, you know, like big flowers on this because it would be out of place size-wise with the piece. And there we go. Now I just want to decoupage over the top to be able to seal it down. Oh my goodness, you can't hear it, but I can hear that rain just pouring out there. All right, and we're gonna open so much easier in these big spaces. <laughs> Let me tell you, okay, that's gonna be the top. This is gonna be the middle. The last thing that I want to do to this little cabinet is just to lightly rub a little hemp oil on all of the exposed natural wood. So all of the wood that I've left clear, unpainted, I just want to kind of seal up and uh, freshen up a little bit with some hemp oil. And it'll look a little greasy right now, um, but this wood is super dry, so it's just gonna kind of inhale it. It's just gonna drink it all in and uh, it'll be all dry again in no time. But uh, it's obviously hasn't been cared for and it's just really thirsty wood and uh, we're just gonna give it a little bit of oil to drink. And look how cute that is, especially with our little, uh, still gonna, still gonna dry, but with our little florals inside, perfect for little girls' dolls, if you want, as a display piece in your house for a vignette, for some spices, as a tea cupboard, anything like that. I'm loving it. This one. This big mamma jamma, it looks awesome with this silver. And I gotta tell you, there was a natural byproduct of um, rubbing all the silver onto this mesh, which brightened it up a lot, was I got little silver tiny flecks all over it. You can't see it, but up close, it's kind of like down around the sides and a little bit on the inside. It looks really cute, it looks awesome. The last thing that I wanna do with this one Oh, and I meant to, oh, I did open it. Okay, perfect. Is I want to take a product from DIY called Old and Gray. And this is a liquid patina. It self seals. It's kind of like a, a stain and a sealer. And I just want to paint those shingles out in a little bit of that, that light gray tone. It's going to again it's going to kind of soak into that wood which is really dry it's going to seal it up so it's going to make it a little bit more hardy because these are pretty thin little shingles and it's just going to change the tone a little bit so it's going to serve as a bit of a stain so you can see the difference it's not going to be super dark it's still going to be kind of nice and light but it's going to blend in well with the the hay sailor blue that we've got going on the sides and it's just going to look a little bit more weathered it's going to look great and there we have it two different little cabinets both excellent for little storage i think that either of them would be super cute for spices or for teas yeah okay i'm a little tea partial so <laughs> Maybe for teas and in uh, in your kitchen. I think again perfect in a craft room Part of a little vignette. This one obviously also is is awesome as um, You know for a little girl and and for her dolls. I mean definitely but um, Both are, are treatments that you could do on full cabinets So think of them for stools small side tables buffets. I mean 
who wouldn't love that as, as a full-size touch? As always, the paint, the waxes that I used, all are available at queenbeecreationshome.com. And until next time, take care.